good way. Uh -huh. You have to sit down and, and ask questions. Right. So uh, my name is Obin Dalko. Uh, today I have here Eno uh, Kwagri. If I, if I miss it, forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she will do uh, the introduction herself. And we are fortunate to have her. So Eno, uh, take it from here. Okay, um, so my name is Eno Kwegwin. I'm the CEO and founder of Talkative Mom, which is Ghana's first and only parenting app. And I'm also a marketing strategist. So I do a lot of marketing for brands who want to market their products on my platform. Um, and then also I have a TV show, so I'm a talk show host. I have a TV show mainly based on parenting. I interview a host of parents and experts and then we discuss various topics pertaining to parenting. And then I also highlight female entrepreneurs who are doing amazing in their own small way. So that's basically what talkative mom is about and what I do. <laughs> wow. Wow. Amazing. So, um, okay. How about you? I mean, just a little bit yeah. about you. Yeah. Right. Little, little. Um, so I have two boys, um, DJ and Drew, they are four and three. They are my inspiration. They are why I even started talkative mom. Um, they were born exactly a year apart and it was really a struggle at the beginning. And I just couldn't get enough resources to help me. So I decided to journal my own journey. Um, eventually, I got other moms to also share their journey. Some had you know, fertility issues. Um, some had losses, you know, things like that. So they shared their journey. And that's really how I built a community. Um, I also have a very loving husband who is called David. Uh, people know him as Kobe. I... Yeah, I, I, he has a tech background and he actually helped me build the app. Um, so he's been very instrumental in my growth. Um, and I don't know what else you'd want to know about me. <laughs> no, that's fine. So basically you're in Ghana, isn't it? You, yeah. yeah. Ghana. Okay. All right. So um, tell us about uh, Talkative Mom, how it began what it has been through and where you are now, you know, all the blessings okay. and all the other things. <laughs> so, um, Talkative Mom began in 2018, March 2018. Um, I had my first son, uh, November 2017. And I, I got married very early. I was one of the first to get married among my friends. I got married two days before I turned 26. So technically, and being talkative and being very candid, I decided to share my you know, motherhood journey and labor stories and all that with my close friends. And at the time, you know, this was something that wasn't really discussed. So a lot of them said, wow, like they had no idea this was what, how childbirth was like. So I thought about it and I said, I feel like more people need to hear stories like this. And it's so funny because this was just a few years ago, but really nobody was talking about it. And in Ghana, in Ghana our culture, we don't discuss intimate details about childbirth. It's like, it's frowned upon. You know? It's like um, the older generation will tell you, you can do it, go through it, and that's it. So even my mom didn't tell me enough. So I don't think I was adequately prepared when I went in there. Um, so after a couple of months, I decided to launch a blog with the help of my husband. Um, he taught me how to start it and all that. And then from there, I took charge and I you know so I was journaling my journey every day about like you know what it was like for me step by step first trimester second trimester last trimester that kind of thing and people loved it people I realized it was refreshing for people so the blog really got very popular and after a while um I decided my story wasn't enough because you know, there are so many journeys out there. So I put it out there and invited other mothers who had stories to share, to also share their stories. So I got them on the blog and they also shared their journeys. And then gradually, that's how I started to build a community. Um, and then, so we sort of moved from the website, which was, you know, talkatimam.com. We okay. moved it to Instagram. So I would share tits, bits, and you know, that kind of thing as my kids were growing meals I was I was feeding them things like that so it really just became a platform for mothers at the time um after a while I realized that 
the dads were left out because at the end of the day, women always say we need help, we need help. But if the dads don't have the resources, then what are we doing? So I decided, let me include dads as well. Um, so then I had dads on there. We did a dad series where I interviewed different dads and, you know, things like that. So we, 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 we've been, you know, discussing parenting and stuff like that on my page. Um, but then in 2020, what happened was there was a pandemic. I mean, everyone knows this mm -hmm. and everything came to a standstill. We all got the chance to really reflect on what we were doing at the time. Talkative mom was in my business. It was just a side thing that I was, I was just blogging. I wasn't making any money out of it. Um, what I was doing was more of events. So I was doing, a, I started off with kids parties, like theme parties, and then I was doing weddings and things like that. But because of the pandemic, nobody was really throwing any parties. And so I really had to pivot. Mm. And um, I started to think more about my platform, Talkative Mom, and how I could sort of switch it into a business. And then the app idea came about. So then I told my husband about it. I said, I feel like the only way I can really scale is having an app. Now, the reason why I'm talking about scaling is because Every day I would get close to about 50 questions from mm -hmm. different mothers. What mm -hmm. can I do? What meals can I feed my child? What hospital can I take my child to? What which shop can I buy this from? It was a lot. It was very overwhelming. So I said, all the questions I've ever gotten over a period of time, I'm going to put them all into the, um, the search engine so that once you ask the, you know, the usual questions I get, once I, I, you, you ask, an answer will pop up and so that's why the app has a search engine and then I said I don't want to end there if someone wants to buy let's say Tom Brown for their child they, they shouldn't just go out there and try and search for Tom Brown why don't they get it from credible vendors and I had bought from you know quite a number of people so I said all the, le the legitimate businesses that I know are also going to be on the platform as well. So that's how we got a marketplace. Um, and then also I said, well, I started talking to mom as a blog. Mm -hmm. And so the blog I would also have to be on the app, but I can't just um, end there where it's just like me blogging and then mother's blogging because we don't have the expertise. So why don't I get real experts on the app as well so they can share things about um you know all the issues that children go through mm. so i had to get all these experts reach out to these experts have them on the app and then they were also contributors as well and then the final feature was the listings because uh, a lot of people wanted to at that time, wanted to find out about schools, their fees, locations, hospitals, playgrounds, you know, all these things. And I said, well, we can have that also as a feature on the app. So then we did our research, got all the information and then had that. So the app really has four features. Um, so that's, you know, that's, yeah, I, I can move to the show eventually, but that's where mm -hmm. we are at the app. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you have a lot from, from blogging to, uh, building an app with multiple yeah. sections serving different needs. So mainly it's um, who are, who are, is it the Ghanaian mothers? Is it uh, Nigerian mothers? I mean, is it, where, where, where is it? So right now it's Ghanaian parents okay. for now, but mm. eventually I would love it to be an African app. So we would have, you know, different countries having information for all the different African countries. It's really for Africans. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because I feel like we already have quite a number of apps from the Western world. Mm. Um, that, that's one of the things that inspired me to create this app because I said for moms with um, what's it called smartphones, the minute they find out that they are pregnant, the first thing they do is download a mom app. So what to expect, baby center, you know, all these other apps. But we can't really relate to it because sometimes they'll tell you your baby is as big as a cantaloupe. What is a cantaloupe? It's not even a fruit that we know in Ghana. <laughs> so I said, no, this is not familiar. Like it's that's it, it just, it, I don't know. I just feel like let's put relevant information mm -hmm. on there. So I thought, why don't we create an an app you know by africans for africans so that's, right. that's really what 
that's you know that's my focus that's my goal wow. right now that's amazing that's amazing mm -hmm. connecting all these uh mothers or women uh, which means yeah. that they really have the experts or the expertise that they need to go through the journey uh, from conception exactly. to you know carrying the, the the human being and afterwards wow exactly wow wow, wow. okay so which other other things that you would want us to know because some ladies some men would want would would watch this and they would want to follow they would want to get to you um tell us more about what you have done and the benefits okay. that, mm -hmm. so um so last year in october um i launched my tv show with mx24 mm -hmm. um it's a parenting show really it's mainly what I already do, but then now I guess it's um, it serves a larger audience. So it has three segments. Um, the first segment I discuss different topics pertaining to parenting with experts, with moms, you know, and then we have uh, uh, um, we have another segment for mom-owned businesses. So mm. I realized that you know a lot of moms, a lot of women especially, have side gigs. They have a nine to five and then they also have a small business that they are running mm. and it's a lot i felt this is a way to highlight your business and help them grow so then we have that as well on the show and then the last bit we have um a, se a segment called mom plug so what i do is i have businesses that i know already that i use i have them come we, we do some live demos so if it's a fitness we do fitness if it's um how to make meals for your picky eaters and stuff like that we make it on the show so um that's really what the show is about um the other thing that i'm also running i recently just launched is the talkative mom investment club so okay. this is in access pension hmm. and um, this came about because i realized again that with female entrepreneurs um, the ones who are doing it full time, they don't have a pension. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a full time, you don't have a pension. So I said, um, we need to get a legit institution, and Access is you know one of the biggest, and who will be able to handle our pensions and our long term savings. So I went, had some discussions with them, and we were able to create the investment club, and it was launched in March. And um, so you know we have. A, a female entrepreneur signing on and then saving um, every month towards their you know financial goals. Wow! So that's, <laughs> that's a lot. Yes, um, it's so a lot. Being an entrepreneur yourself, um, going through it in mm -hmm. Ghana, which are some of the mm -hmm. lessons that you would want to tell us, particularly for young women. How do you start? How do you hold it? If you happen to have a baby, you happen to have a husband. How do you go through all? This. What are some of the lessons that you would tell us? Um, I would say that first of all, being an entrepreneur is not easy at all. Like I think people make it seem like, oh, doing a nine to five is hard, mm. or an eight to five is mm -hmm. hard. And so quit and then start your own business. But honestly, I would say that keep the business, keep the nine to five. <laughs> okay. Yes. Then run you know your business on the side. And if you mm. feel that the business to a point where you can finally leave the full-time job and then continue that, then that's fine. But if mm. it's not yet there, please just grow it a little bit because okay. it's so much, it's 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 so much work. Mm. And um, a lot of times with entrepreneurship, it's not like a, a particular salary that is guaranteed at the end of every month. Unlike a nine to five where, you know, you know that, oh, even if you do, a bit here and there, your, your okay. salary is secure. <laughs> with, the, yeah, with the business, you are constantly working at it. And this month, maybe you're making this much. The next month, you might be making a little less, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. So a lot of work. And then a lot of us, when you start, it's just you. So you are the accountant, you are the creative director, you are the, mm -hmm. you know, everything. And, um, and, and it's very, so it's tough. So I'll say that um, don't, I mean, don't just, don't see it as this thing that is like, glo like glorious and luxurious and like, oh my goodness, I have to be an entrepreneur because it's very, very hard. So please be ready for the hard work. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think you really need to be passionate about what you're doing and you need to be dedicated. Um, the reason why I'm saying this is for me, 
this really is what I'm supposed to be doing. Like it's, it's my purpose. And that's what I've, I mean, I've realized it through all the things that I'm doing. The ideas come to me very easily. Mm -hmm. um, when I make connections very easy, also people can sense the passion when I talk about what I'm doing, mm -hmm. my goals, my dreams and all that. And so things flow much easier when you know that you're really living your purpose. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, you know, I, 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 really, I, I don't know if I can go, I can talk at length about it because at the end of the day, you know, purpose is a whole different topic, but mm -hmm. it took me a while for me to realize once, once it happened, things got a little bit smoother, but it, it's not always smooth. Like, you know, there are ups and downs here and there and I've embraced it. For me, I always say that I feel like life in general is, is just waves. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you are down, sometimes, sometimes you go back down, you know, and I've embraced it all. And then there's, to me, there's nothing like a loss. When I'm down, I just take the lesson that I learned from that and then, you know, I I move on with it. So for me, it's just always a learning curve, something I'm always, I mean, I'm just always embracing and soaking in as much as I can, um, you know, when it comes to entrepreneurship. Yeah, but it's, 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 it's hard. And another thing I wanted to say was that in Ghana, you know, there's entrepreneurship and then there's entrepreneurship in Ghana or in Africa. That's like a whole different, you know, thing. <laughs> That's it's true. Like, That's true. <laughs> it's like you think that the thing is supposed to work this way and everybody's supposed to just get it. Mm. But unfortunately, not that no. way. Like I um from time to time, I I throw certain events. So I do events from time to time. I do um I've done a family fun day, it was a fair. Mm -hmm. Um and then I also do like fitness events that I do from time to time with women. And a lot of times, you know, it's supposed to just be all oh, events, like you pull everything together and then but in the background there's like chaos like maybe you're calling this driver the driver is not picking up or they're lost somewhere <laughs> or it's, you know it's supposed to be delivered it's not delivered this person has forgotten this you know so it's a lot it can be very chaotic so i'll say that entrepreneurship in ghana you really just have to brace yourself because right. it's not it's not it's not like you know the book you can't learn it's not in the, in book. the book it's not in the book it's not in the book written it's, by the americans it's not at all so yeah i mean yeah these are the things wow. okay <laughs> so if uh, what are some of the things that i should look for as 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 somebody in the middle uh, the business is started I'm, I'm i'm working on it what are some of the things that you think i should pay attention to that will make the, the journey as difficult as it is, a, a bit, you know, less difficult if we, as you say that. Okay, so usually with small businesses, it starts with one person. So it's usually mm -hmm. a one-man business for a while. Um, but I would say that it's important to grow it soon. The reason why I'm saying this, for a lot of us, like I'm, I can be very, not when I say controlling, like I'm, I can be a control freak because mm -hmm. I know my, I'm passionate about my business. I want to make sure everything is done a certain way. So it's like I'll have my hands in everything. But the truth is that when you have your hands in everything, you get overwhelmed and you're not, there are certain parts in your business that end, end up suffering. So um, you realize that for a lot of businesses, you have, today we have the social media bit of it, you know, the customer experience bit of it. We have um, the actual, if it's manufacturing or whatever, or if it's a service that you're rendering, you know, the actual business, the actual, the actual production is also happening. And if you are the person who is taking care of the actual production, let me just use an example, like a caterer. Mm. You are the one making the food or baking the cake or whatever. And you're also the one answering the calls answering the, like talking to the customers and all that making sure that the food is delivered you you really cannot do it all you need some you need to allocate someone for everything and it takes some time because obviously the business is not making as much at the beginning you can't start to have but as it gradually grows i would say that try and delegate as much as possible so that um, you, you, know, you make sure that all the different aspects of the business is, you know, it's a, it's a whole, like it's working perfectly. Otherwise, you know, it's, it, you could easily just lose track or whatever of all that is happening. Yeah. Um, and I'll say that be intentional about who you hire 
and also be intentional about how and how much time it takes for you to hire. Like, don't quickly say, oh, the business has grown. I'm going to hire like 10 people. Do it gradually. Do it gradually and be intentional. The, re other, the reason why I'm also saying this was, especially in Ghana, I can't talk for any other country, but in Ghana, one thing I've noticed is that employees, when they come, they feel like this is not my business. So I can do, I can run it anyhow I want, you know, whatever. Um, but if you if you you hire gradually and you are intentional about who you are hiring, you can sort of instill the values that you have in that person, and you can also kind of keep an eye on the person, you know. And that next person can keep an eye on the next person. That I mean, that's just what I do. Mm -hmm. I feel like just hiring so many people and just telling them, okay, this is how the business, that kind of thing, just doesn't work. I mean, that's what I've noticed. You you, I think you build a culture. You 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 try to you build, build a culture build a culture, you, you, you instill those values in the, you know, them. Even if you have to kind of hire a customer experience um, expert to come and train the staff from time to time, please do. Like, mm -hmm. it's just so important because trust me, other people coming in your business can come and run it down. Mm -hmm. Very, very. Mm -hmm. So and which kind so of people do you, do you hire? And um, what, what's your experience with those with higher education, first degree, those in the middle? And maybe those around guesses. How what has been your experience? How do you handle them? How do you separate them? So for me, honestly, it's not never really been about the higher education. So mm -hmm. for me, I I for instance, I have my I have a master's degree. I have two master's degrees actually. I've never been the type to say, okay, I'm going to hire someone with masters. I really just want someone who is experienced. Okay. And when I say experienced, the number of years, I just mean I just need to see that. You have done this before. Maybe if it comes to marketing, or you have some experience in marketing, you probably worked with a marketing firm before, or you know that kind of thing. You are passionate about it, and you are honest. You know there are certain things I want to see. I don't need. You can have someone who had first class, who has the masters, and even a doctorate, and the person doesn't really know what's the, what what's on the ground. Mm -hmm. Like it's just literally book knowledge, and that's it. Mm -hmm. You need to have some kind of experience. So for me, it's really a balance. Like I I I don't just look out. Just the educational okay. background. I need to see some experience there, some passion here, and then also willingness to learn because sometimes really on the field, when you get there, you realize that, oh, um, you have to tweak this, you know, and you learn certain things. That's how I was saying that, you know, in Ghana, it's like there's the book knowledge and then there's, there's the a, book there's one on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did you, how did your friends and family uh, mm -hmm. treat you, or how did you handle them? When you decided to say, okay, I'm, I want to, you know, it, I know it's evolved or, or, um, organically, but at least when yeah. they saw that you were, you were trying to build business with all this education yeah. that you have, what, what did they tell you? Okay. So what's interesting is, so I come from a house where academia is like very huge. So mm -hmm. my dad, you know, he was a full professor, mm. my mom, you know, masters and that kind of thing. So um, my dad actually passed away um, a couple of years ago, way before I got married, mm. you know, in 24. And I know that if my dad was alive, it would have been tougher for me to have <laughs> gone in that direction. Yeah, it's true. Like, um, I sort of found myself, you know, after he died, because I come from one of those homes where your parents will tell you what you're going to do, who you're going to become, mm. you know, what school you're going to to that kind of thing so my life was sort of written out for me until my dad passed so once he passed it was like now I have to figure out what I wanted to do for myself my mom on the other hand she is quite liberal like she's going to she can trust you on what you you know what she wants to do she she'll be a little bit apprehensive but she'll kind of allow you to make your mistakes or make your own decisions, that kind of thing. So she, you know, stepped back a bit, but she was not always for, if, you know, for what I'm doing. Now, the reason why I'm saying this was because um, I started out as, as a blogger, like I started out blogging and a lot of the things I would blog about were, like I said, intimate details about labor. So it was just very personal. And she comes from a background where you don't share information like that. You know, we don't do that. <laughs> so she was a little bit mm, about it. However, um, someone actually approached her in church one day and told her that she should come and thank me because I had written certain things that 
she sort of saw herself like she felt seen okay. let me put it that way it helped her mm. and when she realized that oh she's making an impact that was when she started to embrace it That's so right. i tapped at that you know she's been my biggest cheerleader mm. so it was tough at the beginning honestly it really was tough but then you know seeing the feedback and all you know all the impact and all that now she's really on board it's, so it. it's not yeah yeah wow. yeah how about your friends yeah my friends my, you know my friends we, we are all from the same generation so <laughs> for them you know they've it's been interesting let me put it that way because anytime you are starting something that is new people you know all they'll do is just watch and see how it turns out so for mm -hmm. them it was just like they were curious see. to see how it was going to turn That's right. That's yes right. yes yes right. but and but they were they were they were supportive they really were supportive so wow. once happened um you know and then i already mentioned that my husband for mm -hmm. my husband honestly i say that he's my biggest lesson because a lot of times you know when when you're an entrepreneur female entrepreneur and you don't really have the support especially if you're married of your spouse it's very tough so having his support and if he didn't have the tech background i don't know if i would have been able to build an app for free you know, so, you know, having his support and then actually helping me create some of these things has really, really helped me, helped me cut costs. Yeah, that, help was a good, that was a good choice. Yes. <laughs> that was a good it choice. Was. That's right. That's right. So looking at your business, it means it's, it's something original that you kept yeah. building. It's something that just came out of your spirit, if I should use that word. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So what are some of the, I mean, you said you have a marketplace on the app. Yeah. What are some yeah. of the businesses that, I mean, which areas that most women, if I should say, uh, focus mm -hmm. on? What kind of businesses have you uh, enlisted? Um, okay, so a lot of the businesses on the app are mother care businesses. Okay. So, and I've had a lot of women, the minute they get pregnant, for some strange reason, he decided to start a mother care business. I don't know why, but <laughs> it started okay. Mm -hmm. But I think I think that space is really, really saturated now, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, um, and it, it's, for me, it's a little bit worrying just because I feel like Ghanaians like that a lot. Like um, uh, once they see one person start a business, someone would also start that same business. But my thing is tweak it a little bit. And mm -hmm. that's when you mention people are not the original so when someone starts and is successful they will do the exact same thing and then will do the exact same thing and then it just keeps adding on adding on so i mean i feel like we need some originality here and there but um there there are quite a number of mother care businesses on on the platform and then also we have um quite a number of skincare businesses as well all skincare businesses you know, on there, um, we have um, hair care, hair care as well, hair care is there, uh, clothes, mm -hmm. clothes is a big one, clothes okay. there, uh, you know, ma uh, makeup, you know, things for women, so, you know, there's so how do you make So how do you make money? How do you make money then on that? So, okay, so what, what I do is there's an annual fee for all the, um, all the business on there, there's an annual fee that they pay, okay. and it's like I tell everyone it's literally a market space it's not i'm not guaranteeing you sales i'm just marketing your business for you there mm. um people can go ahead and purchase and when they purchase that's your business i don't i don't charge mm. pa purchase i don't there's no um, payment platform on there um i just want people to be able to sell freely and make their own money so you just pay your annual fee and then that's it also people get the chance to advertise so there's a section on the app where you can add, like you can advertise on there, and that's usually for the multinationals and the bigger companies. Mm. They like to advertise, advertise. on there, so then we have, yes, we have that there. Um, you know, one of the one of the um, key ways that I make money really is um, through the, the ads and promotions from the bigger businesses. Okay. The small business is fine, but the bigger ones, you know, they have a bigger marketing budget. Mm. So then. Um, partner with them and then I promote their stuff to the people on my platform um also I do some speaking engagements mm -hmm. and then 
the events. The events is also one of the ways I make money as well, the events. So I do like fun fairs. So I have the vendors, all the vendors. The recent one I had, I had about 70 something businesses. They all paying you know, a fee. And then I had people attending a lot. I got almost 500 people attending. They all bought tickets to come to the events. And, you know, so those are the ways, you know, and then I have um, um, every quarter, I have a fitness event with mothers where we work out and we have the trainers come in and help us, um, you know, snap back into our original body. <laughs> so we, yeah, so that's so Wow. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, I would want us to wrap up. Um, how do we find you if somebody wants to be on your platform? How do they get you? If somebody wants to be on your TV show, how do they get you? You know, things like mm. that. And some few wisdom you want to share with us. Okay, okay. So um, you can find me on Instagram, mainly on Instagram at mm -hmm. talkative mom. So it's talkative underscore mom okay. on Instagram. You can also find me on Facebook and on Twitter as talkative mom, but I'm very, very active on Instagram. Wow. If you send me a DM, I will. I respond to all my messages. So okay. I'm there. Um, and then you can download my app on the app store and on um on Google Play. That's Talkative Mom. That's the you know the full name for the app. Mm -hmm. And then you can also check out my website. That's www.talkativemom.com. Um, wow. you know, you can find more information there. Um, I'm also on YouTube though, not very active, but I'm on YouTube as wow. Talkative Mom. Okay. And my show is in collaboration with MX24. So if you tune in to MX24, you can watch my show every Sunday at 6 p.m. Okay. The show is so, yeah. All right. And now we want to say thank you very much uh, for taking your time. You're welcome. And we will stay uh, connected. And greetings to your husband, Kobe. Thank you. And thank you for the support. <laughs> All right. So, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, thank you.